Good morning. I'm Jeremy Van Lu, and it's time for the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. With me this morning is student Zach Bowen, student Grant Flora, and the boys' head basketball coach, Coach John Everingham. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Mr. Van Lu. Welcome back. Here it's, we go. It's your t- turn. We had Rita Boo already this fall. Now we're into the winter, and it's time for some basketball. So you're ready to talk some basketball this year? We're ready to go. It's hard to believe it's here already, but, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. Well, that's awesome. So let's go back and uh, talk about a little bit about last year's season. Kind of kind of recap uh, what that looked like last year. Well, we were uh, <clears throat> we had an interesting, you know, uh, beginning to the season because, uh, you, you know, we were youthful. We had some guys that had never had any varsity experience, especially at the guard position. Um, but we did have some returning guys in, in Keaton Dukes and uh, Caden Welty that uh, certainly were our uh, – varsity returning guys that had a lot of experience along with Colin Robertson. Um, so uh, it, it was an interesting beginning of the season because we had to kind of blend in uh, some veteran guys along with some guys that, that had no varsity experience and were young. And so, um, you know, last year, I think our, our record ended up at nine and 15 and um, we had some goals that we set out to accomplish and, and we were willing to be patient with some of those goals in terms of, uh, the development of our overall team, and and it really took some strong senior leaders, and Keaton and Caden provided us with that, um, and they were willing to be patient with the development of some younger guys, and uh, sure enough, by the end of the season, we were playing some pretty good basketball and and had some big wins down the stretch. I think uh, leading up to that sectional championship game that we played in, uh, we had won four of five. Uh, uh, basketball games with with big wins over um, uh, Tippy Valley um, at the end of the season. That's probably our, our highlighted win there, where we were pretty jacked up to to kind of go into that one. But but we did have some some big wins there. Uh, we we uh, um, avenged a, a early season loss that, that we we lost to Lakeland during the regular season and got a chance to play them again in the uh, sectional. Uh, that was here, right here at Wawasee, and beat them 53 to 32. So we took care of them pretty good, uh, which led to the championship game at Northwood. That was pretty exciting uh, to be a part of that. Um, so overall, it was a it was a very good season for us. Uh, probably some people out there that think that maybe our record should have been a little bit better, but we had goals that we had set um, uh, early on, and and uh, we weren't really paying much attention to that record. We're just trying to get better you know, as a team and kind of leading up to the end of the season. And when you have a team that comes together like we did last year, uh, we were playing our best basketball by the end of the season. Coach, before we uh, continue on, um, we've got our new student broadcasters that are uh, joining us uh, this season. And I failed to mention that on the front end before I got you talking about last year's season. So we've got Zach Bowen, and uh, this is his third year involved not only in our CTE uh, Pathways program here at Wabasi High School, but also sports broadcasting. And then we bring Grant Flora to the mix, who is a senior at West Noble. So, gentlemen, you want to introduce yourselves? And, Zach, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Zach. As Van Lewis said, I'm Zach Bowen. Like he said, I've been broadcasting for three years now, and I enjoy it. And I'm glad to have Grant as a partner now. Um, I think we both are doing a really good job so far with the two girls' games that we called, and I'm very excited to call Coach Everingham's games this year. So how what was your first broadcast here at Wabasee High School? I think I remember it. It was Manchester, and it was the girls' JV game. And it, what year was that? Well, it was two school years yeah, ago. Yeah, two school years ago, so yeah. <laughs> you were a freshman. Freshman. I'm trying to think of like the year, though. But you yeah. were a little shorter than you are now. Oh, way shorter, way shorter. <laughs> yeah, and how was that experience? Um, it was really, I think I could have done better, honestly, that first game. <laughs> um, with the whole headphone thing, too, I think that kind of got me off track a little bit. Sure. But other than that, I mean, I think I did kind of good for the first time. And like I said, I'm ready to improve that. Okay, well, Grant Flora, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Grant Flora. Uh, like Van Lee said, a senior at West Noble. 
Um, I've been broadcasting. This is my first year in the CTE class, but I was able to do some broadcasting at West Noble for their basketball games. I did that as a sophomore and a junior. Um, and I'm just, I'm really excited to come in and join this program and learn some more about that. Um, and yeah, I, I played basketball up until my freshman year. And then I decided to join the broadcasting world and I've loved it. It's been a great, a great opportunity. Well, we're looking forward to uh, hearing your, your call, not only in the home games, but uh, away games as well. And now that we've sp- spoken to you and introduced you, now this is your broadcast. So, Coach just summed up last season. You want to start hitting him up with some questions? Well, yeah, Coach, you lose two seniors who were major contributors last season and Caden Welty and Keaton Dukes. Uh, but you also returned three starters and a good core off the bench. So where does your returning group need to make the most progress heading into the season? Yeah, I mean, it's always nice to have experience coming back. You know, um, Miles and Maddox Everingham, you know, at the guard position coming in uh, as freshmen last year, not really knowing what to expect, but we are so depleted at that guard position. We Going back even a year, Cameron Salazar is a three-year varsity guy, and Ethan Carey, who's a – another two, three-year starter, you know, at the uh, guard position. Um, We lost those guys heading into last season. We really didn't know what to expect from freshmen, you know, playing playing the game. But um, they came in, they started every game, and and I think they even, both those guys led us in minutes, you know, last year. So certainly the experiences that they gained, you know, last year um, are going to help them coming into this year. And, 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 um, we're looking for big things from from those two guys certainly, and uh, Colin Robertson uh, being a three year varsity guy and and starting uh, a lot of games for us over the last three years and being a key contributor certainly is going to be a, a big key for us. So you got the guard position covered with with some returning guys, and you got the big man uh, in the middle at six foot six, probably two forty, two fifty. Um, that's a nice combination to have. And uh, Peyton Felger came on late for us last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably started the the last ten games, you know, uh, for us. So really, uh, uh, we have with Miles Everingham, Maddox Everingham, Peyton Felger, Colin Robertson, and then a new guy uh, moving in uh, from Whitco that I'm sure we'll talk just a little bit about. Uh, you got five guys that are returning with varsity starting experience, and that's not normal. That's not a normal. Uh, thing uh, to have, you know, coming into the season. So we're going to use that to our benefit and try to kind of build off of that along with bringing some of our bench guys along. Coach, as you mentioned earlier, last season you ended up with a record of 9-15 and and you made it to the sectional championship last year, as you mentioned also. So what's your key to bringing that sectional championship home and just getting to that next level this year? Yeah, it's it's probably the same, you know, every year. You're, you're trying to see what you have, and I know – I think I heard in segment two, we'll talk about some summer activities that we did. And and you certainly start off, you know, the season trying to figure out what you have and what sort of team chemistry you have. And you're just building a basketball team. And back in the olden days, uh, you, you know, you had four or five weeks of practice before your first game. And they kind of slim that down due to whatever reason, doesn't matter. We have only uh, two weeks now where we squeeze in uh, trying to learn everything and that's where having returning guys coming back is such a big key because we spend less time on uh you know press offense because we kind of know that already and zone offenses and and so it's just about how guys are going to mesh uh together you know in the locker room and and then on the floor and what sort of combinations that we might have uh they're going to best suit us as as a basketball team all right well coach like you mentioned, 9-15 and 15 record. You play in a difficult NLC conference where there are a lot of big schools, a lot of really solid basketball programs. So how does that schedule uh, in like the middle of the season, that conference schedule, kind of prepare you for the postseason in the IHSAA tournament? Yeah, we can go through some of those games. I think that would be kind of fun to kind of recap those. But as I look at our schedule from last year, we, we start off, you know, we played um, at Warsaw, uh, which is always a really tough environment. And I liked how our guys competed in that game. We kind of fell apart late in that game. They started pressing us a little bit, and, and their pressure uh, hurt us. And um, honestly, the, the the second game of the NLC schedule was a, a close loss to Northwood um, at home. And I, I remember that game because I had COVID, and I was at home watching. It's the, I believe maybe the first game in my 15, 16 years that I've ever missed. I was sitting at home watching the game, 
And our assistant coaches did a great job kind of covering, and we didn't skip a beat there. But um, we were in really good shape in that game. I think we were ahead going into the fourth quarter. And uh, um, um, we had a an injury. Uh, uh, Caden Welty uh, got hurt late in the third or early in the fourth quarter that really set us back. And, and we weren't real deep off the bench, you know, last year. And, and so that injury occurred, and unfortunately we dropped that game. Um, but – we, we, we go to uh, Plymouth, and these are some places to pl- that are really tough to play, tough environments. Uh, Northridge, we, we dropped a close one there, and, uh, and then at Goshen at home was one we felt like we could have uh, won. But you're right about the NLC conference. It's a tough, it's grind, it's a grind. And uh, we finished last in the conference, but I think every game we were right there uh, with a chance to win the game in the fourth quarter, maybe except for one. Um, and what that does is that does kind of prepare you for postseason play that, you know, when you the toughness that, that it takes to compete in those particular environments, it kind of becomes normal when you get to that sectional play. And, and um, you know, again, you look at, you know, us playing Lakeland early in the year last year and getting beat at Lakeland and then playing them at home in the sectional and we're 20 points better. I think that's a testament to our team and our program that we were able to improve that quickly and be a sectional championship contender. And again, even in that sectional championship game, we're, we're right where we need to be in certain stretches of that game, but uh, Dukes goes down with a concussion in the second quarter, and we're basically without him for the remainder of the game, and, and um, um, that's kind of tough to, to overcome. Coach, I do have a question for you. So you've been coaching, like you said, for 15, what, 15, 16 years yeah. now, and uh, you know the last uh, part of your career here at Wawasee – we're talking about you know the previous season, but let's talk about previous seasons. In, you know, since you've been in this business, do you, do you keep in touch with your former players? Oh, yeah. or do they do they reach out to you, or do you reach out to them? Vice versa, what is it? Uh, both. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? I mean, yeah, guys that were on the very first varsity team that I ever coached at Argus. Uh, certainly, uh, they're to the age where. The, the age gap when I when I first started coaching there it seemed like a lot, but now as I got I've gotten older, you know they're in their upper thirties or you know, thirty five or married children, yeah. yeah. And so um, you know thanks to social media and cell phones and all that stuff, we've almost become friends, you know, now more than a player coach type relationship. And and I've really taken pride in staying in touch with most of all of those players, or at least knowing what they're doing and and uh, where they're at and. Um, you know, some guys go through some struggles and you're there for them. And, and that's basically what you tell them when they're in high school. I'll always be here for you, you know, through thick and thin. I'm always somebody you can count on. And and I've been really fortunate to uh, develop some really strong relationships with with players, you know, over the years. I, I coached at Argus for a couple of years and I was at DeKalb um, for six. And then I think this is my sixth or seventh year here. So um, I've really been fortunate, even as an assistant coach prior to that, um, some guys that were a little closer in age to me uh, that I still keep in contact with. So going to weddings nowadays, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Getting to catch up with uh, former players, uh, uh, that's really special when you get a chance to kind of uh, celebrate with, with those, those guys that, um, that you coached. And, and so, yeah, I'm very proud of those relationships that I've built over the years. Well, and, and you're still a young man, so can you imagine that some of these kids here at Wawasee, since you're here now, let's just assume you're going to be here forever. Yeah. Some of these kids that have gone through your program go off and get married, have kids, and then they come up and start playing with for you. How weird would that be? I know. It is It is <laughs> weird. You know, these these guys, like I said, they're – they're not only they are getting older, I'm getting older, everybody's getting older, right? But the, some of their kids are like 10 years old now, you know, and so um, it's very intriguing. I, I will I will mention real quick here too is just a few days ago in practice, I invited my uh, one of my high school uh, basketball coaches to our practice, and he's up over retirement age, and so you know the 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 relationships that you build and and the the relationships that you have with the players and the coaches and. And uh, those things just last forever, you know. And so it's kind of neat for me when I was a player, when I was a uh, uh, high school and college and coach and all these relationships that you build because you really do go through thick and thin, you know, throughout a season. And so you do build, you know, some pretty strong relationships. All right, Coach. Well, that was some good talk about last year's season. And next we're going to talk about what happens in the quote-unquote off season to prep 
for this upcoming season. More Coach's Corner Basketball Show coming up on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show. I'm Jeremy Van Lu, alongside with student Zach Bowen, student Grant Flora, and coach John Everingham. So we look back a little bit at last season. Now let's look at this year, not the season yet, this season. Let's talk about summertime. Coach, I've got the first question, and then we'll hand it over to the boys. What happens after the sectional championship loss? Well, if, if I was being honest, I can tell you exactly what's hap- happened after about every season I've ever coached. I get sick. Uh, it takes so much time and energy, and you just go pedal to the metal for three or four months or whatever. But uh, usually when that last game occurs, it's time to rest and to kind of uh, get your immune system built back up. And that's the players and the coaches alike that – you know, you take a step away for a while, and um, um, you spend most every day with each other and, and going through the battles of a season. And in a lot of cases, you get really tired. And obviously, you still got to come to work. But it, it, there's a big difference with people in education, you know, like us that, you know, go home at 3 o'clock and you, or you're home at th- by 3.30, then the, the coaches that stay here till 6 or 6.30 and then go scout, it's like a, it's an amazing amount of time. Um, but – you know, the first thing we do is we get away, and we get away from each other and, and certainly rest and kind of recoup. And then it becomes kind of exciting to do some of the spring workouts. The guys, uh, we certainly encourage them to be multi-sport athletes, and, and um, we have a lot of guys that participate in spring sports, and they're right in uh, as the weather kind of gets nicer participating in that. But um, as the spring sports kind of wind down, uh, we get a schedule set for, for the summertime that includes – you know, weight training, uh, individual skill development. And then we try to go out and have some fun and and play in some basketball games as well. All right, well, Coach, you kind of talked about in the last segment about how bringing back experience helps you to not have to teach as much. and Everyone kind of already knows the system. But how do you kind of balance with the guys that know the system and the new guys coming in that maybe need some more of that? Um, First thing that comes to my mind is, you know, you rely on your assistant coaches, you know, and so it's nice when I can take, you know, a group of five or six guys and, and we kind of advance and, and guys that need extra, you know, help understanding different uh, concepts and on offense or defense um, that, that the other coaches. We, we got an amazing coaching staff, and we haven't had turnover here on our coaching staff for quite some time. Uh, coach Hoffert, Chad Hoffert is our JV coach, and, and he's been with – me since I got here and and he's been uh, at the middle school he's been a freshman coach and and a JV coach and he's been coaching I think for 23 or 25 years which I'm sure makes him feel old but um, you know he coached at Warsaw under the Hall of Famer Al Rhodes and and um, uh, several other really good coaches so he brings a, a plethora of knowledge to our coaching staff and Nate O'Connell kind of the same story where he's been around. He's coached here at Wawasee. He's coached a little bit at Warsaw. He's a Warsaw grad. Um, but I played with Coach O'Connell in college, and so we went to the same college. So a lot of the terminology and, and philosophies are similar. And so um, having those two guys as my right-hand guys uh, certainly is uh, something that, that is very helpful in terms of teaching concepts to guys who don't quite get it yet. Um, Scott Beasley is a volunteer assistant, and uh, certainly he's a huge relational guy that um, is very important to our program. He's kind of the cool guy on staff that uh, when I don't fit the bill, which is most of the time in terms of being cool, um, he shows up uh, in his Jordans and guys like hanging out with uh, uh, Coach Scooter. So um, Scott Hetrick's back has uh, probably uh, been here five or six years as well as our uh, volunteer assistant coach. He keeps our stats and uh, does junior warriors and does all kinds of different things for us there. So um, And then uh, – to, to round out the staff is Andrew Wilson as our freshman coach. I think he's in his fourth or fifth year, and he does a good job developing young talent down at that freshman level. So we got a good coaching staff. The, the long answer to what you asked is, that, uh, is that, that we have a good, solid coaching staff, and we rely on those guys to, uh, to, to get guys understanding what we're doing. What, what, does, what do these coaches do, you coaches do, during the summer months? 
We coach basketball and think about basketball. Uh, no, I'm kidding. We do do that a lot, probably more than we care to admit. Um, but uh, each of us, you know, obviously our 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 number one uh, thing that we that we do, our number one priority is certainly uh, being a good father, being a good husband, and uh, we spend a lot of time with family. And uh, sometimes the families get together and do fun things. And I, I can tell you one story of. Uh, Coach Hoffert and I were trying to find a, uh, a hobby that we would enjoy together, so I took him out uh, fishing, and I can tell you it's the two worst fishermen you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> we went to a lake out in my backyard, and I'm telling you, you don't go out there and not catch fish. It's so easy, right? But uh, we didn't catch one fish, and we spent more time talking than we did looking at our bobbers and catching fish. So uh, we do fun things together. Sometimes it's just the guys and the coaching staff, um, and sometimes it's family stuff too. But I don't know if that answered your question there. But well, yeah, good group it, of guys. It did because, you know, like you said, you do need that little R&R, if you will, before the season. But um, the only thing, by the way, the only thing I catch when I go fishing is a sunburn. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I, I like to eat it, but it's not my thing. So, uh, but but you know, that's kind of what this segment is about. Summertime, guys. So, what questions might else you might have about the summertime activities? So, coach, I kind of want to ask about the whole resting process. You know, the players they go and rest after the season. So, how do you get their mind really locked back into basketball when the season starts back up? Well, you know, I I become a recruiter. You know, honestly, and a salesman, and. Um, you know, you're selling guys on what could be and what sort of things. We have individual meetings to say, look, you know, these are these are the things you did well last year, and these are the things you need to work on to, to improve your game and take it to the next level. So we have a lot of meetings about, you know, who they are as players and who they are as people, and, and we try to, uh, you know, sell them on the idea of you got to get better. You just can't stay the same. And um, uh, we have guys that are really committed to doing that. And so um, – you know, whether it's our individual workouts or our summer games, a lot of our guys play, you know, AAU basketball and their own separate teams. Um, but really a focus on, you know, working on some things that they they need improvements on. And then at the same time, too, building upon those strengths and not forgetting about what they're good at and continuing to get better at what they're good at, too. So, um, you know, after that resting is over, I'm selling the idea that we could be a good basketball team. You could be a great player. Um, and then we go full force, you know, in the, in the month of June. And, and then again, we kind of rest up, let guys go into football or any other fall sport that they might be in. And then, uh, you know, like I said, here we are in November getting ready for our first game in just a few days. So. Yeah. Well, that was another thing I was going to mention was people who are in multi sport athletes and how do they kind of balance that when you have workouts over the summer and then you have also the fall workouts that you have. Yeah, we worked well together. Um, the coaching staffs uh, of Wawasi, you know, the head coaches especially, you know, we work well together in terms of setting schedules where players don't have to choose. And I'm big on that, where if if we have a shootout or we got individual workouts or we got weight training that we're not overlapping with some other sports that are out there doing the same thing so kids don't have to choose, I don't think it's fair – you know, to put a, a, a student athlete in a position where they have to go, oh, do I go to football or do I go to basketball or do I go to baseball? Uh, we, I try to set the schedule. There's enough time in the day uh, for us to set schedules where we can do our thing with all of our guys so they don't have to make decisions on where to go. And there's no pressure, you know, from coaches or parents or anything like that. Um, so now we do get up early in the morning. Uh, we're usually here ready to go. The doors get unlocked at 6 a.m., and, and by 6.30, we're off and running. And um, and then, you know, the weight training sometimes is combined with some other sports, and, and sometimes it's on our own, skill development, athletic, you know, progress, and things like that. So uh, I think the biggest thing is that uh, here at Wawasee and the schools I've been at before, we work real well together in terms of creating schedules that fit fits the needs of the, uh, of the student-athletes. Coach, how would you say those off-season workouts went? Uh, I just uh, mentioned before that we, we have guys, first and foremost, the thing that you need is uh, players that are committed to getting better. And so, uh, you know, you don't want to be in a situation where you have to send out reminders and texts and and saying, hey, do, where were you today? We had workouts. And you, you really want guys to kind of uh, control that themselves amongst, amongst 
the team, you know. And so we got a good group of guys that are committed to, to the game, and, and other guys kind of follow their lead in terms of how often they're in the gym. And it's not just about getting shots up and skill development in the morning when we meet. It's also sometimes even beyond that, uh, maybe in the evening, twice a day. And so it's got to be something that you have a passion for. It's got to be something that you actually enjoy doing or else it's not going to work out, you know, for you. So um, the our workouts went really well because our guys are committed to, to, to doing that and they actually like doing it, you know. And so it makes it much easier on the coach uh, for me and our coaching staff when you got kids that, that actually want to be there. There's some years – that I've coached, and if you're in it long enough, this this happens that it's like, oh, my gosh, I guess I'll be there, but I don't really want to be there. And generally speaking, it's hard to get better as a team or an individual when, when you just don't have a passion to be there. Well, you mentioned a little bit about some of the games and some of the competition you try and do during the summer. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we we went to uh, Finley, Ohio. Was probably the highlight, you know, of our summer. It always is. We we go there every year because it, we get away a little bit and we get away from um, all the kids' schedules and and every th- place you got to be and going all over the place. We actually travel over. It's not that far of a of a drive, but it is in Ohio, um, down by Fort Wayne, just about forty minutes from Fort Wayne to get to Finley, but. We spend three days there, and it's a good team-building exercise. We stay together. We eat together. We play together. Um, we have some fun. And um, that's always a good team-building, you know, uh, trip, you know, to get to know who's getting along and maybe new, who needs some extra assistance in, in um, getting to know some different people. Some younger guys get to know older guys where they normally wouldn't hang out outside of school, get to hang out together. Um, so that's always a big trip for us. Um, we had a couple shootouts here at Wawasi. That's kind of nice that we don't have to drive. The older I get, the less I want to get in a bus and travel places. And I'd rather have just all home games. So we'd have two shootouts here uh, that went really well for us. A couple games you could start to see we got a team, man. You know, like it's really kind of working. And we get to experiment a little bit too. Like we tried some things and lost some games. It's like, oh, wow, we're not doing that next year. Um, so uh, you get to experiment a little bit. Uh, you get to find out who the players are. And certainly you're always evaluating too. So we, overall we had a very good summer. And it's not just about what we did. It's our guys are doing a lot of stuff on, on their own too. Coach, you said you had a little bit of fun in Finley. I always wanted to know, do you, the coaches, ever say, boys, it's time to have a little fun. It's it's you boys against us coaches. You ever do that on the court? Uh, if you're talking about the basketball court, the answer is <laughs> absolutely not. Listen, when you get old, you're not playing because it gets embarrassing real fast Okay. in terms of the, the kids beating up on you. But what we do do is shooting contest because it's like riding a bike. You never forget how to shoot a basketball. And so we can still compete at a very high level uh, shooting the ball, whether it be three free throws or three pointers. But we don't we don't like it when people guard us. You know, we gotta be open to knock those threes down. But when we do win, we let them know. I'm telling you there's some smack talking going on. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I don't know. I think we're undefeated, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that sounds like fun. Okay, so we've got uh, last season in the books. We've got summertime in the books. What's our next segment, Zach? What are we going to get to next? My, I'm old. I'm older than Coach Everingham, so I've forgotten what we're doing. We're going to review the upcoming seasons and games. Upcoming season and games. Okay. okay, so that's coming up next here on the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. With us is Coach John Everingham. We've got student Grant Flora and Zach Bowen, as well as myself, Jeremy Van Lu, And I lied. I, I, I said, Zach, hey, what are we coming back to uh, listen, or talk about? And you told me, and then I said, yeah, sure, that's right. Well, I'm the guy who wrote the schedule here. I screwed that all up. So we're going to get to the upcoming season, in particular Tuesday night's game, uh, the home opener with Fairfield in the next segment. So let's talk about freshman JV varsity squad and the roster. So, Coach, 
Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the boys here and see if they got questions about that. All right, so my first question is kind of about the varsity roster. Uh, so returning for you this year, you got Miles and Maddox Everingham, who averaged a combined 15.9 points per game, and they kind of carried the load on the perimeter. And Colin Robertson anchored down the paint with 5.6 points per game and 5.6 rebounds. So who else will kind of take on those major roles in addition to them? Yeah, we talked about those three guys, uh, certainly, I think, in the first segment, and, and we're counting on them for, for a lot of uh, to carry us in a lot of different areas, not just, you know, scoring, but uh, handling the ball and uh, rebounding as well. But Peyton Felger is certainly, a you know, a senior leader for us and uh, didn't score a whole lot last year, but made some huge plays. Um, you know, a guy that can play defense, you know, on the inside um, and the outside. Um, and then by far is our best defender in terms of defensive positioning and taking charges and boxing out. Just being a fundamentally sound basketball player. Again, he started – Probably 10 or 12 games for us last year and, and um, will be a big part of our season um, this year. So, um, you know, newcomers kind of to the varsity level. Um, after those guys, we talked, uh, I think you'll probably have a question about the move in there. And a lot of people have questions about the move in and Colin Zebarth. But uh, from the Wallace C basketball program last year, um, you know, a kid that I'm ultra impressed with and, and proud of um, Carson Smith is going to be an impact player for us this year and uh, he played JV last year and and uh, had some successes on the floor uh, scoring the basketball but uh, really has become a complete player for us you know uh, one of our better rebounders um, he distributes the basketball really really well um, and really takes pride in in being a complete player um, We've found here early in the season that he, his passing abilities and his post-up abilities are uh, a couple aspects uh, of the game that are really going to help us out in terms of winning. Um, Carson's going to be a big part of what we're doing this year. Um, it, uh, also kind of coming up from the JV from last year would be Weston Hoffert. Um, uh, Weston is a, a, a player for us that is going to provide good minutes at the guard position, um, and he is a lights-out shooter. If you leave him open... Um, it's not going to end well for the opposing teams in, in terms of uh, him missing because he doesn't miss a lot when he's open. And and uh, handling the ball and, and distrib- getting a center offense, he's a high IQ guy and his defensive positioning is real good. So uh, we're looking for um, a lot of minutes from uh, Weston Hofford. And, and beyond that, um, just kind of going through the roster just a little bit um, uh, in terms of guys that you know potentially could see some minutes you know at the varsity level, Weston DeLong, um, six foot six, 220 pounds, um, a kid that's come a long way in the last couple of years of, of, in terms of his basketball skill, his body. Um, and this year, uh, I think he's, um, you know, when he first came to us, he ran the mile, I think. And not that that makes you a good or bad basketball player, but it certainly gives us uh, an idea of what's in what sort of shape that you're in. He was running the mile, let's say, at eight eight minutes and 30 seconds, and this year ran it in six minutes and 17 seconds um, and kind of hit the mark in terms of uh, uh, requiring our players to run a mile under six minutes and 30 seconds. So uh, really proud of uh, Weston and how far he's come. Now, Grant's a runner. Uh-oh. What do you think of those numbers or running the mile? The improvement's really good for sure. 617 is a solid uh, solid start. Um, so, What's yours? Uh, my fastest mile, I ran that in the sectional track meet last year, was 435. 435, gee. You want him to play yeah. basketball for you this year? If we have a running contest, I'll be contacting him. Oh, he does go to another school. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I know you guys got an outstanding uh, cross-country program there at West Noble. And uh, clearly, if you're running the mile, <clears throat> whether it be cross-country or track, uh, that certainly probably puts you in an elite category. But when you're six foot six, two hundred and twenty pounds, and you can run it under six minutes and thirty seconds, that's quite yeah, uh, an accomplishment. Sure. So, for sure, um, yeah. So just to just to hit on a couple other players coming up uh, from the JV or freshman team uh, that that are going to have a chance, you know, at the varsity level. Mason Shoemaker uh, played a lot of good, solid JV minutes last year. Made a couple huge plays for us at, at the varsity on the defensive end. Um, uh, Darius Lewis is another guy that's fitting into our, you know, our top ten. Um, he does have an injury right now. Uh, uh, he broke his leg in the in the summertime, so it might be a few games before we see him. But he's going to be an impact player for us. Braden Pike, uh, Dallas Miller up from the JV, and then we have a newcomer 
at the high school here in Nolan Holsworth that uh, I won't say too much about him uh, yet, but he's going to be an outstanding player in our program, and you may see him early this season uh, play a few minutes here and there. But he's a talented young guy and uh, just a freshman at 5'11", um, but he's an exciting player to watch, and he'll be playing a lot of JV and maybe some varsity too. Coach, as you mentioned, the new player coming in, Colin Zebarth. How do you fit him into the mold here at Wallace? It's been interesting because I've never had a move in that's been an impact player like Colin. And so, um, you know, it, it's been an interesting process when I first learned that, uh, you know, rumors float around about guys going different places. Nowadays, it seems to be happening a little more than, than, it, than it has in the past. But, um, you know, I knew about him and I because we played Whitco and I knew he was their best player and certainly – you know, hearing some of these rumors, you just kind of play it off. And, and actually, honestly, I was sitting in uh, Mr. Doty's office, our athletic director, and he literally the kid walked through the door, and I couldn't believe it. Um, uh, him and his mom took a tour of the school, and, and they were interested in coming here for academic reasons. Um, he was interested in the marine mechanics program. He works at a uh, marine uh, a marina uh, in North Webster, and so – you know, the opportunity for him to kind of learn more about uh, marine mechanics with our CTE stuff was an opportunity that that uh, he just couldn't pass up, you know, for his junior and senior year. So um, the proximity of where they lived to our high school was a, a good fit. And then, you know, the last, you know, piece was that his mom uh, was is uh, had gotten our, our art teaching position, too. So everything just kind of worked out. He's a great kid, great family. Um, the culture of our program, the things that we believe in. He certainly fits the mold there. And then, you know, to top it all off, he's a pretty good basketball player as well. All right, so we talked a lot about our varsity squad. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the freshmen and JV players? Yeah, I, I'd love to. I, I think that, uh, you know, building a program certainly is about not just, you know, the varsity team, but also developing guys on the, on the JV is super important. And so – um, we've been pretty successful with taking guys from the freshman team or the JV or both and then and then fitting them into the varsity level, whether it be a year or two down the road. And so um, we look forward to seeing guys develop and get major minutes um, on the JV and the freshman team. And so guys that are coming up from the freshman team, you know, Kane Dukes and uh, uh, Dallas Miller, we mentioned before, um, uh, B. Mill, Braden Miller, his nickname's B. Mill, so you guys might be saying that this year, but uh, uh, he's coming up from the freshman team. Nolan Holzwart will play a little bit of freshman. Uh, Quentin Taylor's back uh, from the freshman team, the C team. Um, and we have, uh, let's see, yeah, I mentioned, and Weston DeLong will see some JV minutes as well. And then, you know, our freshman uh, team, led by Coach Wilson, um, has got a couple players that I'd like to talk about. And, and one, I uh, mentioned Nolan Holzwart, but uh, um, another player that I really, really like um, who, who's going to be going to be um, a, a really good player in our program. And we're super excited. And, and I think I could probably say it publicly, but um, not to put any added pressure on him, but uh, he quite possibly is one of the best prospects um, that I've ever had, that I've ever coached. And so in Michael Wilson, uh, he's six foot five already, baby faced. He looks like a freshman, and and we're hoping that, that he gets up to six seven, six eight, six nine, and and maybe a year or two. Um, but we're looking forward to seeing him develop um, at the freshman level, and then maybe at the JV level this year, and then we'll kind of see where that takes us there. He's got a soft touch. He's got great feet. Um, he's one of the fastest guys that we have in our program uh, when he runs like a deer, and so. Um, he's a good kid. He's committed to the game. Um, he loves to work. And so I'm looking forward to, to him and Nolan. And then the last freshman I'll talk about is Davis Everingham. So another Everingham uh, in the mix that will be playing freshman basketball, um, a high IQ guy that, that can shoot the basketball. So um, we have a good mix of, you know, a uh, couple seniors, juniors, sophomore returning guys, and then some, some freshman guys that we're really excited about as well. Coach, I, have, I kind of have a question on the moving up process from JV to varsity and everything. How do you prepare players to do that, and how do they earn those spots to get there? Well, performance, attitude, your grades, 
you know, how well you fit into our core values. You know, certainly uh, we're looking for a specific type of person, um, first and foremost, uh, to, to be in our basketball program. So if you're making good decisions in the classroom, you're making good decisions inside and outside of school, um, and then you have skill and talent, um, that certainly is the equation that we like to, to relay to the kids that it takes to, to kind of move up. And so once they get to a certain level, we certainly are evaluating on performance. And it's not all about the points. You know, it could be what sort of gaps do we need to fill at the next level. And so, you know, last year was a good example where, you know, we had two freshmen in Miles and Maddox that, that probably were JV basketball players, but we had gaps and holes at the varsity level we just didn't have a choice uh, to play them or develop them. We had to play them because they helped us, you know, win a few basketball games. This year it's a little different because we're a little deeper. And so some of those guys that, that, that are freshmen that need development will be able to do that on the freshman and the JV team this year because there's no gaps at the varsity level because we got guys returning uh, that have varsity starting minutes, varsity experience. And then we have guys that are moving up from the JV that give us some depth. So there's not quite as many holes there. Uh, to fill. So we feel good about uh, making sure that we develop those guys in, in the right way. So um, we feel good about a roster overall, a good mix of experience and youth and up and coming. And that's exactly what you want. And I will add too, um, I believe we have 30 or 31 players involved in our basketball program in a time where a lot of schools are, are canceling C team games or freshman games because they just don't have enough people to play. And so there's an excitement there's a buzz around Wawasee basketball, and the kids are wanting to be involved, and that's something I'm very proud of. Real quick, um, middle school, what's that looking like? Yeah, same thing. It's hard to find coaches, but we found good people to coach. Um, um, Jeff Carey, Jason Conley, Randy Smith, uh, Pat Moore, and um, you know um, uh, Rich Matthews, uh, guys that are coaching at that level. Um, uh, are returning, so we got we didn't have much turnover there at the, at the middle school level too. But we got we got teams down there. Uh, past two or three years, we've had really good, you know, middle school teams that won championships. And this year, we have good teams that are well above average that I think are going to be very competitive down there. All right, I'm, I've got thirty seconds, gentlemen. Do you have anything else for this segment? Rapid fire. Oh, good okay. for me. They just want to get on to the final segment. Oh, they want yeah. to know about this Fairfield, year, Falcons. Fairfield, and all that fun stuff. All right. Well, we'll be back with more Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and online at 937themix.com. Well, it's time for our final segment. It's time to talk about go time this season. And before we get to Tuesday night's home opener, Coach, how did the uh, scrimmage go the other night? It wouldn't like most scrimmages. You do, you do some good things, and you feel good about those things that, that you did well. And then you got other aspects that that uh, you realize you we really got to get to work, and we got a long way to go in certain areas. So, um, you know, the things that we did well, um, I, I was very pleased with. We we put the ball through the hoop on occasion, and uh, that was nice to see. We got the ball to the basket probably better than we have in the past, and got to the foul line. Um, you know, we moved the basketball well on the offensive end. Uh, but we struggled, you know, on the defensive end, keeping guys in front, uh, rebounding the basketball, and some of the fundamental stuff, you know, on the defensive end, the footwork and and boxing out and and things like that. We we struggled a little bit with, but we weren't playing any slouch. We were playing Wabash, who won 14 games, had everybody back. They're a team that uh, certainly will will be pushing, you know, towards the 20 win mark. You know, I would guess this year if they stay healthy, and so. Um, it was a really close game. You don't really keep score. You race the score after the first quarter. Um, but I think we won two of the quarters, and they won two of the quarters, and, and we played against the zone, and we played against a little press. And and so it was a good scrimmage. It was good to finally get out there against somebody else and and to see what we got. And, and honestly, there weren't too many surprises. I kind of uh, was thinking through some of the things we needed to get better at, but it's easier to teach after you go through it. And they're like, oh yeah, I guess coach was right. 
because against our JV team, maybe it looks better than what it actually is when you step out there against a real varsity team. So um, that's why you play the scrimmage. You you experiment with some things, and and um, you just I've watched the film twice, you know, since we played last night, and and certainly got some things we'll work on um, today and tomorrow and Monday prior to the Fairfield game. All right. Well, we look ahead at some of these early games. Uh, you got Fairfield and Angola as your first two, and then you'll head into a double weekend with Manchester and West Noble. So to begin the season, you'll have four non-conference foes, and three of which play in the NECC. So which game jumps out to you the most, where you'll find out the most about your team? Well, I don't. I really don't think West Noble is very good this year, so I'm not not worried about that game at all. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, I'm, I'm going to hammer you about West Noble all year long in the coaches' show. Uh, no, honestly, they're, by the way, they're very good. I know that you know they're very good too, but um, we're going to take it one game at a time. Look, that's cliche right? Every coach says one game at a time, but uh, you certainly, when you get bored, you look through the schedule and you check a couple off. You think, oh, man, that would be kind of nice to win. Well, for me, it's the first one, and um, so we're really looking forward to kicking the season off on Tuesday against Fairfield. Um I know Coach Hines is listening, so I'm going to watch what I say a little bit. How important is that that setting the tone first game win? It's really not. It's not important. Really? It's really not. It's fun. It really is fun. Uh, but winning is not as important as maybe what people think. It's you know if you're playing a NFL football season, you only play a limited amount of games, and if you don't win the vast majority of your games, you don't even get a chance to go to the playoffs, right? And so, you know, I said it at the very beginning about last season. We, we were a very patient team. We uh, took our time in terms of our team development, and we'll do the same this year. And so our we will strive to do our very best to win each and every basketball game. And I think we're going to have a chance to win more than we lose this year. Um, but to win the first one or the first few uh, certainly would be very nice, and it's a lot of fun. But it's not – going to make or break our season. It's not a crucial game that we have to win. It's not a must-win game. We do go through this, the season, and we do pick out a few that are must-wins, you know, type. We we got to win one here sooner or later, um, or we get on a streak, and, and we want to continue that streak. And so, But it'd be a lot of fun to win that game on, on Tuesday, but not a make or break for us. Coach, you have that double weekend coming up, as we mentioned. So how do you prepare for that double weekend? Is there anything that you prepare different, or is it the same? It's it's the same. I I've always been. Um, who do we play on Friday? That's that's not that's Manchester, right? Yes. Yeah, we play Manchester on Friday. So you know, it's kind of like, you know, in the sectional, you wouldn't think about who you're playing on Saturday until you can beat the, the team on Friday. And so we prepare all week, for the Friday opponent, and then once we get through that game, then we prepare for the Saturday opponent. And so it certainly does not give us an advantage. Here's a funny story, okay? I like to. The radio show, you guys will, will learn a little bit here that, that you may poke and pry in some areas where people want to hear about that you wouldn't normally hear about in, in the paper and things like that, little tidbits that uh, people listen because they want to know about certain things. But I can tell you this actually happened, that, that Wes Noble, I was told this, that Wes Noble had uh, canceled their, their Friday night game. They had a double weekend that weekend too. Until last year, and uh, a good friend of mine who works over in the West Noble District said that they canceled that Friday game because they're tired of losing to uh, Wallace C on Saturday night. And last year, <laughs> they kicked our butts so bad. And so I went back to that guy and said, hey, your plan must have worked. They don't have a double weekend. We do. They'll have a full week to prepare for us, um, and then we will literally have about an hour and a half to prepare for them. So – Certainly advantage West Noble on that one. Good job scheduling. But um, we'll get ready for Manchester that weekend, and then we'll worry about West Noble when, when that time comes. Yeah, well, in these first four games, like we said, they aren't conference opponents. Uh, but what is at stake? I, you know, West Noble is in your sectional. I believe Fairfield is moving up to 3A this yeah. year. So what kind of what's at stake with those first four games? Yeah, through the first four games, we will play two sectional opponents. So it would be kind of interesting to see where we stack up against those guys. 
and if I'm honest, if I'm just being honest, and I'm serious when I say that, uh, I I don't even know. I I really don't know. I think we got something going. I think there's there's kind of something there, but it, you you really don't know until you get out there and and actually play. And so, it's a very difficult thing to do to become a good basketball team. A lot of things got to be clicking and working together to win. It, you know, if winning was easy, everybody would do it, right? Um, it's not easy. It's very difficult. You got to be able to. Uh, to execute in certain situations and to beat pressure when you're ahead and to provide uh, pressure when you're down. And so um, it, it's very difficult to win, but we do play two sectional opponents in Fairfield and West Noble in our first four games. Uh, Manchester's got a stud of a player, about 6'6", uh, lefty, who um, is a sophomore. He's a young kid, but last year I think he had 32 points against us. Um, he is a legit um, college basketball prospect. Let me just put it that way. So I don't know quite what level yet, but at six foot six and he can stroke it, uh, from the outside, he'll post you up. He'll beat you inside and out. We saw him in the summertime, uh, come here and play a little bit. So, um, Angola had a kid and, and, um, I can't remember his name right now, but, uh, um, a kid that beat us from the outside bad last year. Um, um, so, we'll be facing some good competition early and some good players as well. And so it'd be a good test for us. We could honestly win all four of those and, and we could drop all four of them. So we just got to be, we, we got to stay focused on our team and our team improvement. Coach, after those first four games, I do believe I've seen you hop straight into conference play against Warsaw. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Is that? I thought we had one more sprinkled in there. I don't know for sure. I can, <clears throat> quickly look at the schedule here, but um, I I think we have five. Columbia City, is that not one? I mean, the schedule changes every year, but um, certainly um, w- going into that sectional game, or sorry, the, the after first. After Whitco, you have Warsaw. At, after Whitco. Yeah, we play okay, Whitco. 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 Yeah, yeah. So is, we play yeah. five games. So we, we open up yeah. with those four games we talked about. We play Whitco on a Saturday, and then the following Saturday we open up in conference play. And so it's a good pre uh, conference schedule for us, uh, um, again, with some good players and some good teams. But th- that's five games to kind of get ready for Warsaw. Um, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, we go to w- – no, we're playing Warsaw at home uh, this year. And so uh, I think we're going to be very competitive with that Warsaw team. All right, well, kind of like we mentioned, we look ahead at these four first games, and you got two sectional opponents. Then you head into the conference play. And kind of what we look at here is you have kind of two major championships throughout the season, conference championship and sectional championship. And so we head into conference play, and those games start to mean, you know, they start to mean something for your conference yeah. record. And then you go to sectional and to play those four other teams, or um, could it be any one of those four teams, yeah. in order to win that sectional. So how do these first few games start preparing you for conference play? Yeah, they will because, like I said, we're playing against good players. But I kind of break the season down into segments. You know, we, we do that little, uh, the, you know, the five games before conference play. And then, you know, conference play is just an, a, another level of focus and physical nature of play, and it becomes much, much harder. We're playing really good programs, really good teams, and we're coaching against – really good coaches in the NLC. And so we go through the grind of the NLC, and that's going to help prepare us for, you know, postseason play like we talked before. We also <clears throat> added on January 9th a homestead team um, that's going to be a big challenge, you know, for us. But we're ready to take the next step in terms of playing competition like that. We'll be very competitive in those games. And um, and then we finish up the season with a few games that are out of conference that kind of give us a tune-up for the IHSAA tournament. And it's worked in the past. You know, we've been very competitive. We've been a player in the game. Uh, we we're in the conversation, and it's just a matter of if we, you know, have enough, you know, to to overtake, you know, Northwood. And so, everything that we're doing in the preseason, you know, was that drill good enough to beat Northwood? Um, you know, because you know, is that game performance, is that effort good enough to beat Northwood? Because Northwood's going to be last year they were ranked you know, number one in Class 3A for much of the season. Um, they didn't lose much, if anybody, you know, coming into this season. So if they're not ranked number one, number two, or number three pretty much all year, I'd be shocked. Um, so they're returning, you know, sectional champions. So they're the target. 
uh, that's what we're shooting for. We'll get a chance to kind of uh, see where we stack up against them in the regular season, and then the road's going to go through Northwood in the postseason, maybe West Noble. So, are we excited for some basketball? Oh, oh for yeah. sure. We're ready to go. I'm losing yeah. sleep and waking up in the middle of the night and drawing plays on napkins, and it must be basketball season. <laughs> <laughs> and we are in Indiana. Well, um, as we said uh, at the uh, opening segment, these two fine young men here are going to uh, be providing play-by-play and color commentary for not only the home games, but the away games as well here on 93.7 FM The Mix. Home Games will provide the live video on our YouTube channel, CPG TV. And so, Coach John Everingham, what do you think about any last words of advice before Tuesday night's game for these young broadcasters? Well, don't be nervous. Uh, Nobody will be listening. No, I'm just kidding. You should be nervous. Our guys are going to be nervous. I'm going to be nervous. Um, you know, if you're listening to this broadcast, come on and watch us play. We, we got a great TV station in CPG TV. Uh, we got a student-led um, radio station, TV station, and these guys are going to do a great job this year. We also have our restaurant, the Upper Deck Club, um, that, uh, that we're doing again this year. So it's quite an event. You got to come check it out one time. We got good kids playing on the court that really give their best effort. And this year we got some skill and some talent, and we'll throw some points on the board. And and I'm just kind of hoping that people come out to watch us. I agree. Gentlemen, anything you want to say? Last thing? Coach, I just want to let you know I'm very excited for this season and to call these games. I'm I, When I say this, I really mean it. I am very excited, and I'm looking forward to the season. Grant? Yeah, Coach, I just wish you the best of luck Thank as you. we open this season. Um, we got some good stuff coming up. All right, well, and of course, we'll be bringing you these uh, Coach's Corner shows every Saturday at 11 a.m. here on 93.7 FM, The Mix, online at 937themix.com. And, well, you can actually get it on our YouTube channel after a few days on demand, CPG TV. This has been the Coach's Corner Basketball Show with Coach John Everingham on 93.7 FM, The Mix, and 937themix.com.